Sphinx is wow. dead, and you have witnessed a hell of a start to IEM 100. How did Nancy do this? A Cinderella run to rival all of the Cinderella runs in Counter-Strike history. Coming into the event as the lowest ranked team, there's no denying that this was an insane run from 9C. Something that should never have happened. But how insane was this run from 9C? To see them beat the number one and number two team in the world at the moment. To win their group. 9C are off to a great start, going into round 6 with a score of 3-2. But why is this so good? Most are only one round away from tying the match up again. Well, it's all because of the economy. In the middle game of the half, meaning pistol round is over and the first buy round is over, you will hit this weird round, where as you can see on both teams, none of them have a lot of money. So this round is crucial, the winner will secure the next round as well, and maybe even one more. So for 9C, this means taking a lead of 5-2 or even 6-2. While for Mouse, this is an amazing opportunity to equalize as 4 3 or even 5 3. Going into the buys, 9C are slightly worse with an MP9, while the rest of the 9 other players have rifles. 9C starts in the default 3 on A, 1 ramp, and 1 outside, where they will play properly, by having the MP9 take a close fight from Hot. And then one player in Heaven as a fast rotator, and the last A player will take the door fight early on. While on outside, we can see Max pushing outside to quickly find the advantage, and just map control, using this smoke right here to do so. This smoke blocks the vision from any players outside trying to look towards red or garage, but it's usually very easy to predict that a CT has pushed red with the smoke, so keep that in mind. While mouse are going for one player outside towards the lane, two on the roof and two inside lobby, a very default position to play from. This setup is made to try to find an early opening, with a nade on the door, in the meantime Brawl is on silo trying to hold for any outside aggression and more. So where we will see the crucial parts of the 9C game plan. Well remember Max, well as we saw he pushed outside, but he quickly fell off after he saw Mouse use this smoke. This smoke indicates something will happen outside. And for Max, he could have stayed further up, but there would be no point of him risking to only get a 1 for 1 trade. And here Mouse almost takes a round in their advantage, after pushing Max away and not giving 9C anything to play off. But Mouse are not doing much of this outside ID, of pushing 9C out and away from outside. But let's circle back to Max and this angle here. He is playing so close to main that he is not showing too much of himself to Silo, allowing him a nice headshot angle and off angle towards Silo. But here we can see 9C regroups outside, with Martinez helping his teammate. Since as the Heaven player, when the round goes quiet, there's no point of you staying in Heaven and waiting. And here he goes for this kind of insane angle to take mid round. We are 50 seconds in and Mouse has not moved yet. Like look at how slow they are playing. And this is all since they have not found any openings or information at all. Kind of insane to see how slow they are playing right now. But Mouse are starting to move, like some old statues. And here we will see Exertion, on the solo outside take, use some great utility before he starts to clear out outside. Since he has seen the early city smoke outside, and an insane whiff by Martinez sees him fall, they so much craved for. But Max from his position is able to trade right back. All of a sudden that opening Exertion got is meaningless. They're playing great to fight back for space. Oh, that's such a tricky setup. What a refrag from Max. Couldn't even see exertion. Since Mouse still can't do anything from that. House of Peak is in a great off angle, but he gets too excited and walks out. And here he needs to turn for a flash in the open, and this is never ideal. But he's still able to find a one for one trade. Not too ideal, but there's not much for him to do. But what did House of Peak learn from his position? Well, that Mouse were full on W keying down ramp. And see how fast 9CR to rotate down to not allow Mouse a post plant for free. It's there. Wasso peak. Oh, almost a second, but. Mouse misses this bolt on here, since this would have forced Max to peek the window and probably died. Uh oh. GT Another bad looking volley. for his. But here, since he missed it, Max can stay and here just hold and peek when he is ready. A crucial mistake by Mouse. This round by won by some amazing team play from 9C. Bad Molly. Max, Max is smoke. taking advantage of that. It's a fake plant once, Max swings wide, beautiful kills coming through from the CTs and Shuhei is going to have to do it all on his own, 25 on the clock. Smoke gets open, he's looking to chase that single frag, they are all around him and he knows it, he has to take the fight to them. It's a deep corner, perfectly played from DGT, excellent. Dude. Just disconnect from the bomb site and comes back in with impact. This round starts weird, with 9C doing some tactical damage by knifing Martinez. Like, is this a punishment or what? And can a knife like this ruin a round for 9C? 9C starts by having 1 outside, 2 on A set, and 2 towards ramp. A clear focus to leave A weaker, so you can either take more ramp control, or even just send one ramp player down to secret to be more aggressive outside. While most, well, they're just going out, with 3 players early running out of hot. While 2 more players are somewhat slower behind, to kind of see how this rush goes. And I'm going to be honest. 
is not looking good for most. Even with only two players, Nancy are ready for a fast play, with one player molting hurt early while the other players using some utility towards the door. And the outside player on all of this has gone main and will just spam the smoke if needed. And just like that, it's a 1v5. And to be fair, most position and spacing for this rush was off, like way off. Just look at how 9C are able to find two kills going out, that should never have happened on a rush. But why did I decide to break down this match? Well, we need to see what a round like this can learn us about how 9C plays. And it's all about the hold. Look how perfect 9C plays it. We're having two players ram, a rush like this can be devastating. But look at how fast 9C are to rotate it over, as well as the outside player, who had again tried to push up outside, is as well super fast to come and help. Something we are not seeing all teams being good at, at any levels of Counter-Strike. Like 9Z are putting together some really, really hard to fight against plays, and their aim looks fantastic. They try it twice, and this time it gets absolutely stuffed. Shuhei trying to get tricky with the repeat. 9Z are now on the T side. And here they are going for a setup with one outside towards the lane, one silo and three in lobby. And as we can tell, 9C are trying to find an early opening or just anything early. Something we saw most as well were trying. And this is crucial on Nuke. If you can't get anything early as a T, you will struggle. Since most maps are way more dynamic, since they all have this, a middle part. While on Nuke, you have the outside part that is off to the side. And this creates a dynamic where by not having a middle, a spot to rest like most maps, you have this. And just the amount of utility and risk in a late outside take is never ideal. Most are playing with two players outside, one in garage and one pushing close to silo, two on A in a more laid back setup and one in ramp. But something happens, 9C by sheer luck finds an opening in this setup for mouse by having one pushing silo and one holding outside. Since mouse are forgetting, a player from silo can just peek the player under him. And here 9C finds the first kill. Because they've, they've got, oh wait what, oh okay from above, Jesus. And a kill like this is always better for the player elevated on top, since he will only have to shoot at the head and shoulders of the player under him, while the player under him will have to shoot at the legs. And look at how 9C just falls back again, since why should they start to take outside after that kill? And the issue are now on the most side. After getting an opening like that, 9C has to make a plan of where to go. This plan usually looks like this. First step, check how many players are left. Second step, what are your utility? Third step, what are the map control you have? And fourth step, where is the enemy the weakest? For 9C, the checklist will look like this. It's a 5v4, so they're up by one player. They have enough utility to go wherever they want. They don't have too much map control, since as you can see, they only really have lobby and far back on outside. And that makes step 4 much harder, since so far most are weak towards outside, but since they don't have much control there, it's a weakness they can't really abuse yet. But something 9C can abuse is that outside weakness. But wait, didn't I just say they can? Well, it's a concept we have to talk about. Since a weakness in such a crucial spot is something you can actually abuse, it's like Mirage. If you are a lurker, listen up. If the T takes control of middle or starts to fight in mid, this usually forces an A player to con. And as a lurker, well this is perfect, since you can then walk out on A and go for the 1v1 fight. And here we see the same concept in action, where outside gets weak and Brawl will then rotate over towards Vent to outside. And 9C uses this to just walk out on A site. Max is found outside, but that does not matter, as 9C finds a perfect timing on the A site player. And here can kill the only A site player left. Oh, this is gonna catch him off! Oh, he's not ready, Buddha's all the way out. And this smoke just stops Mouse retake and they have to save. In round 18, I said that this smoke made sure that Mouse had to save. But if you haven't seen round 18, which I'm gonna go over now, which I've already done, but I'm gonna show you from here, from where I where I stopped the analyze, is that actually Mouse goes for the retake. So I just actually just so as we see, Mouse, uh, as we see, 90 is walking out here, and usually just walking out from like one spot on a map is never really ideal. But since Mouse only have one player left here, and you can see CU is here, then one player secret and one ram, it kind of works, and of course 90 understands this. So let's see now. They're gonna walk out and they find this great timing. Like look at look at Sihu. He goes to the left and he dies. Maybe it's 4 by 3 I don't know. And this should usually just warrant that you're gonna lose the round, right? It's a 3 v 4. And these smokes who are being put down right here are just too strong to kind of deal with. And as you see, like a play like this is fine. I still think like Martinez here should have been holding for this because Hauso is already holding for this player. This guy and this guy is holding behind, so Martinez is kind of useless right behind here, and this is crucial, by the way, this is crucial. So they go for this player, they can't see anything, the smoke gonna fade up. Now you need to make a decision. Decision of mouse is going, and here is where I stopped because I were like, oh, they're gonna save. So I literally didn't watch this. I literally skipped this round. Which, you know, 
says more about me than you know anything else and you're fair to make fun of me because this looks like something you would have seen because even like look here they even re-smokes it the bomb is ticked around one third roughly one yeah a little bit more than one third it's ticked you get another smoked this part is already disappearing and you can't really take main unless you push through very again very crucial in a round like that so it looks like gonna save now but instead they're gonna pop this flash right there this flash it's an okay flash because it will be hitting at least this and this player. And if they are blind, an, an amazing player like Jim Pat could easily be able to find these kills. So let's see how this goes. So the flash is being popped. It's a great lineup. Learn this one. But he flashes up, he turns, and you can see he gets one kill. And this is the mistake. Off that kill, okay? Jim Pat is found. But off that kill, Brawl swings out. And this is perfect, by the way. Because when you swing out of a smoke, when you just swing out, this player and this player will be focusing that. So Brawl tries to play off the timing, it's very luck based, to kill this player right there. Great job by him. The problem is how so. The guy peaked heaven died, so why is he looking this way? And not on Brawl. That is the issue we have right now for us. And Brawl, with a risky spray transfer, gets it. And a 3 we 4 is now a 2v1 but mouse as you can tell is quite split up and if buddha was in door right here right this would have been fine but since he is in main this kind of sits mouse in a very tough position because looking at this mouse should be winning now but since buddha have an option to actually make two 1v1 fights it's a problem buddha's multed off but plays here and now he hears his player jump down and he knows brawl is here he knows this player went for the defuse, and as you can tell, the time is running low. He knows that this player will most likely hold the defuse, while Brawlin will hold for him to swing out. That is where we are heading right now. So let's see. So on the swing out, just a great peek, by the way. Like, you have to call. Like he, like on this, he have a flash. He could have flashed, peeked, and stuff like that. But what a great peek that is! Just swinging right out. Then goes here, spams the smoke. And you can tell, this was the time left for Mouse. And Mouse could not have dropped the bomb. So finding this with five bullets left is kind of insane. Kill. And just like that, the retakes on, but they're going to have to be fast. They both got the kit. The hot frag comes out from Buddha. Oh. there. 9Z, clear them all. We are going into round 5 and 9C are down and it's quite a key round, where we can see 9C are on the last buy for some few rounds if they were to lose, while Vitality has built up a bank to allow them one or even two more gun rounds if they were to lose this round. So let's explain the situation. 9C had the worst thing that can happen to a team, and that is to win the pistol round and then lose round 2, like 9C managed to do. And this ruins your economy for multiple rounds and why we are seeing 9C needing to win this to be able to build themselves back up. Vitality starts with one going B. 2 being boosted up on short by this fast boost and 1 going long. And it's a common setup for the CT side. And as I talked about in my latest video, all about Dust 2, why not check it out after this video. But for CTs, you want to control catwalk and or long. And here we are seeing Vitality focus catwalk. Now you are going for a scout middle, a fake smoke thrown like this from spawn and one bottom mid smoke. And then 3 players going middle. And 9C has almost a perfect start with the scout tagging the B player of Vitality. But it might not look too good, since 9C are not going B. But this tag puts a lot of pressure on Vitality, since Vitality are set up with only one on B for now. If this player gets tagged, well you kinda have to have a player go and help him, since he can easily be run down. And you can see Spinks is fast to run to middle to kind of help the B player if needed. Vitality goes for this boost, and here again Cyber reads 9C like a book, but misses a crucial shot, something he does a lot on this map. That's my expectation. Uh, sorry, I, I mean big first. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And this is perfect, since 9C uses this mid smoke to be allowed to send 3 players fast up catwalk. And when fighting here on catwalk, if the CTs can't get away from this elbow position and towards the drop down to ramp at CT, they will be suffocated here. And that is why Vitality after the missed shot is not peeking back to fight, but rather jumping down to make sure they can't be pushed. And a great nade allows Vitality to just fall off and stop the 9C push. I do not like that 9C did not push the up here, but again it's risky since as a T you have no idea what is hiding behind this corner. But with all of this pressure, 9C has one mid control, and it's only one smoke that is splitting them from taking more map control. So what will they do? 
Well, it seemed like they have an understanding that Sphinx is hiding here behind the wall. And he used this nice Molotov and spam combo to make him low. And see what this does. This forces Sphinx to CT and not up ramp towards B. Since 9C has a player holding for that. Meaning this help Messi were supposed to get while well, it's gone. And a low player is again stuck alone on B. But now I would love to call that 9C all goes to B and that weakness in Messi I talked about is what lost Vitality the round. But no, Vitality did something even dumber. Sphinx realized he needs to help B. And here it goes for a peek. And has combined this with Flames pushing Catwalk. And here Sphinx is found with a great shot from the scout. As well as Flamesy is found for only one kill back, and Vitality are only two players left, as far apart away from each other as possible. And this is all thanks to Vitality early on losing one player, and the weakness they had on B. Guasso peak, oh and a follow up dink, huge impact, but not enough to keep it clean. Mezzi will connect deep from B. And down goes Mezzi, the only chance to stop all that had to be Zywoo, two opportunities. Vitality are going for 3 players long and 2 towards B. And here for good measure, they will smoke bottom mid to be allowed to go to B without being seen from top middle by any players, since giving away how many is going B is never ideal, and why it's worth using a smoke like this to make sure the T's can't get any information. While 9C are going for this fun boost in top middle, just to get a good angle in case a CT is pushing bottom mid to underground early. Then having 2 players going B early and 1 towards long, so a very default setup from both teams. 9C solo long player uses a lot of utility to force Vitality to react at this. And this is perfect. With Vitality off the flashes using 2 Molotov towards the door, they're missing both and this allows DGT to peek, since Vitality had gotten the off angle before him. And as we can see, Hausu peek had 2 flashes and could have used them to support DGT. But here 9C wanted to play off the game of surprise, and it bites them in the back. So Vitality has one long control, but 9C are able to win mid, as Vitality rather decide to hold mid passively from spawn and B site. So winning middle, while being a man down, is a great way to get back into the game, especially since by winning mid, you will have an easier time splitting any of the sites or getting some 1v1 fights. But Vitality are not easy to keep still, and in a man advantage. Vitality are doing everything to just clear out stuff. And it worked great with this flash towards long and a peek to clear it out. But being this restless is never ideal in a 5v4, since they should be waiting for 9C to make the move and not the other way around. 9C needs to do something, and here they will take catwalk, but they want to do it silently. And here they walk into the op of Saiwu, who swiftly finds another kill for Vitality. One round a low light, one round a highlight, and another chance here in the 8th. First one's clean, no pressure with the flashbangs, no trade potential, Martinez is trying to post up. But 9C are able to actually push back Vitality, and in a 5v3, Vitality should just be going back, regrouping, and going for a retake. But again, they are too restless, and here we are seeing it all fail for them. Let's start in ramp. What is Flamesy doing? Peeking out here. But let's as well then ask, what is Saiwu doing? Holding here and missing a crucial kill that sees Flamesy die. As well as Messi off this play wants to push up ramp and maybe find a kill, and he's found. Like how are Vitality giving them so many 1v1 fights? Sphinx and Apex both gives 9C 1v1 fights, and just like that, a disjointed Vitality loses an unlosable, and I mean it, this should have been unlosable 5v3. All they had to do was to play the retake together and actually use their utility properly. Suddenly, it is back into the even 3v3. Sure, the T still feel stranded, but they're pulling players off the retake. MP9 from Catwalk, Wasso Peak, the double kill. I'm not gonna do any deep dives into this round, rather talk about how 9C abused Vitality's lack of mid control. Vitality have no player's middle, and that has allowed Max to just run up here in this insane off angle. Hiding on the telephone pole like a chipmunk. <laughs> He's ready for this. He is so ready for this. But what about the underground? Well, we have this amazing off angle from DGT, where you can see the shadows of any underground players to see when you will be peaked. Something similar to Vertigo video I made some time ago. Why not check that out as well after this video? And here it's where it all comes together with 9C winning long control by Molotoving and just waiting for it to burn before peaking. And just like that, this mid setup is dangerous, and it's such a nice way of taking mid with aggression. I've never seen this type of setup before, like yes I've seen the DGT spot, it's very common, G2 and Hunter have used it a lot and have a lot of great highlights from it, but not the max spot. And just look how perfect this is, Vitality has to win something back, and here they will try to win mid, since going B is usually a death trap, and they've lost long. And here it all crumbles, DGT is first to be tested, and as soon as he spots a shadow he's locked in. In the meantime Buddha from Catwalk is helping him towards underground, and when he spots Sphinx, DGT will swing to get another kill. And this kill will force the top mid player to peek right into Max, who can get another kill. Oh, the shadow's too strong. I mean, they don't know about this part of the setup, even if they knew about him at top mid. Wow. This is a gun round. Oh, they didn't. 
It's falling apart. Max comes what? up with the second. It's such a beautiful setup for 9Z in mid. 9Z won Anubis as well, and beat Vitality 2-0, something that should have been impossible. But that was a long match and deserves a breakdown in itself, and I will not do that today. But what we can learn from 9Z, well first is the creativity. When you are the underdog, you need to come to the table with some new stuff. And that shined through on the Dust2 match versus Vitality and some glimpses of it on Nuke. As well as 9Z are just a solid team. 9Z showed how well they play off each other, how well they were able to coordinate pushes, and I don't say this lightly, but they were coordinating and playing off each other like a top 10 team, not a top 40 ranked team. Well, that was the breakdown. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and I want to say thanks to everyone who's still here watching, and all those who clicked on the video and probably left by now. It means the world to me. Here are two videos YouTube told me you would like. Thanks for watching, Kings.